Welcome back to Side Chat. I'm Bohika Ice, and as always, Crouching Walrus is here, and our special guest this week is Kobe Wobi. Hola. Uh, the, <laughs> the first bit of news is um, that really came out this week was the developer diaries for 1.39 of what they're working on, and it doesn't say uh, hopefully all the things they're working on because flight models and matchmaking are still evidently crap, as we found out in this kind of crappy week of War Thunder we've had. But they did list a ton of aircraft and some squad features that we're looking forward to, um, and some other tools for user-created camouflages. I don't really know who's been asking for that, but I hope uh, that's not been their entire docket for what they've been working on. Um, I know you guys were excited about some of the new planes, like the Spitfire Mark 24, 22, and so on. Um, what do you think? Can't uh, wait for the Spitfire, like Mark Spitfires, and the 14. Um, I kind of wanted the 14. I didn't even know all the other Griffins were coming, though. So, I wasn't too excited about it, because I didn't know they were coming. They weren't in the release tree, that's all I knew. Yeah, they're doing planes outside of the release tree before they work on the planes that they originally freaking uh, listed in the release tree. And Mosquito, too. Mosquito, oh, and then boy. we got the Canadair uh, Sabre. Um, yep. That's noteworthy. And then a Thunderjet. Another Shooting Star. A Twin Mustang. I, I guess the Twin Mustang should be probably a premium. Better be. Um, so should the Canada <laughs> Sabre, for that matter. I'm looking at the release tree, and it, it looks like it is a premium. The Canada Sabre or the Twin Mustang? The, no, the Twin Mustang. I don't want the Canada Sabre to be a premium, because I don't want people who just open up the game to buy their, you know, like... If it's going to be a premium jet, it's going to cost, like, 15,000 lions, because if you I'm... can sidetrack all the way to Tier 5, then um, yeah. every Walt Warrior is going to do that. I don't think they're ever going to make a Tier 5 premium plane. They, they <laughs> absolutely be, shouldn't. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, this is going to be the first part of a three-part series where we try to address the um, flight models and the um, performance models and the damage models of War Thunder, and hopefully, I don't know, debate. We all uh, seem to have different ideas of what the game should be. Um, but first off, I want to bring Kobe in here because I've been, what, we met 10 years ago in Battlefield 2 almost now? Yep, 10 years. 10 years this year. Um, and you're by far the person I've met that knows the most about aircrafts. So you do it every day for a living. And uh, I figured you'd be our expert we turn to about this stuff, because you're always yelling at me about how I mispronounce shit and have it all wrong, so... I am a grammar Nazi, yes. <laughs> um, so, I guess we'll start with some basic airplane anatomy for uh, the newer players, the, you know, kids who are just getting in here to, to War Thunder because it's a free-to-play, don't know anything about airplanes, or other people who, you know, just want to know more. And the basic things is, you know... A car turns with a steering wheel, an airplane turns with its uh, control surfaces. This... Um, if you basically want to run through what the rudder, elevator, flaps, ailerons, you know, how do those control? There's how... three basic control surfaces, the, the ailerons, the elevator, and the rudder. The ailerons roll the airplane, so if you make a roll like a, like a roll, it does it in that axis. The elevator controls the up and down of the airplane. And the rudder controls the yaw, the side-to-side -side movement of the airplane. Most airplanes also have flaps, which allow you to extend the wing surface, which allow you to fly slower. But if you fly slower, you need more power. So typically, that's what happens if you see if you leave the flaps out on an airplane, you need more more engine power to produce the same amount of airspeed. Also generates more lift. That's why well, you that's, turn better. That's because it's got much bigger wing, wing area. Yes. Yeah. And so things like uh, when those, like in the game, when those get damaged, um, you know, each one controls how you, like a rudder gets damaged, it's not necessarily critical, but if your elevator gets damaged, that's basically game that's over. That's a death sentence, yeah, because you have no control of your, of your vertical movement. You can control somewhat with the engine power. Typically, airplanes are designed to where if you add power, they'll climb. If you, re if you take power off, they'll descend. That's set up by the aeronautical engineers with the, the, Amber the wing and all sorts of good shit like that. The last one piece is some of the planes have leading edge ailerons. Is that correct? Or they're called you have slats, a different or sometimes they're called slots. It's, um, it depends on the airplane. Like the 109 has a slat. Typically, a slat is a leading edge device that moves. A slot is not one that moves. It's basically a slot cut into the front of the wing. Um, the 109s have it. Some of the Yaks have it. And that's really cool because those things are, are air-loaded, so they come out automatically. So when you drop to a certain airspeed and the lift um, goes away, they will pop out automatically and create more lift for you. 
let you slow the airplane down quite a bit. The Lovachkin's LA-5s and LA-7s and the I-185 also has uh, leading edge slats. Yeah, the Russians were big on that. Uh, I don't know why. They just were. Let you fly the airplane a lot slower and let you land the airplane a lot at a much slower airspeed than than normal. Maybe that's why, because they could get into much smaller spaces, much smaller runways. Lower, typically, the slower you fly, the shorter your ground roll is, and you can stop a lot quicker, so you don't need big, long runways. And uh, for flaps, we talked a little bit about it, but for we have in the game, you have takeoff, landing, and combat. And uh, I know you always said that combat flaps is not, you know, there's not a thing, a button on the dashboard of a no, plane there's that says not, combat. No, there's not it's, a thing for landing flaps either. <laughs> it's just different degrees that it's preset yeah. to. If you um, notice, some of the some of the airplanes in the game, like the Spitfires and some of the other British airplanes, like the Typhoons, have just landing flaps and normal and up flaps, retracted flaps. And the reason why is because those systems on those airplanes were driven by air. And I think the Hurricane's the same way. Yeah, it is. Um, when you put the flaps down, a little valve, uh, a so solenoid activated a valve on top of an air tank, and compressed air pushed the flaps down. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It was just either on or off. So they went all the way down. That's why you have early hurricanes and spitfires that don't have yep. settings. And theoretically, in an airplane, if this is right, if you're in a spitfire, this is something the game doesn't do. If you were to kick your landing flaps on in a dogfight, you would not get them back, right? I mean, the air is gone, and you're just... No, I think well, or it, can it, it come depends back on the airplane. The Spitfire, actually, I think you had to retract them on the ground. I'm not sure about that, but typically, anything that's air-driven like that, regardless of what it is, it's typically just a one-use thing. You um, lose it, use it, and you lose it. I had somebody ask me, and this is a real quick thing about flaps. Somebody asked me once, you know, well, since we're dogfighting, you want combat flaps out all the time, and I think people that you know are new to this game and new to airplanes don't fully understand how to correctly use flaps. So, combat flaps are what, I think, like, would, would you say once 15 degrees or so? Uh, it they... depends on the airplane. It's more of a midpoint. Uh, they allow you to turn a lot better because you can fly slower, you can create more lift. But that's, that's... not a penalty in a dogfight, right? It like, is, yeah. yeah because they stick out, and so it's going to require more engine power to go the same airspeed, and so it's going to make it's going to make you slower, yes. The higher much, wing much, area. Much, much more drag. Yeah, the higher wing area is a double edged sword. It creates more lift, but also creates more drag. It makes you slower. So, the thing you've always said to me, like, since the second week we played that, is that the way control surfaces are in this game are not modeled how real airplanes uh, react. And I guess the first thing we'll step on is um, how do airplanes react at different speeds in real life, and how are they reacting in the game due to you know, aileron stiffening, elevator stiffening, and whatnot? Well, typically, because most of the airplanes that are in the game are just rather are conventional man controlled control services they're not hydraulically boosted like on the f86 and stuff like that the faster you go the harder it is to move those control services so you need to input more force to get the same amount and the same result out of it so you're saying a6 so, and 5 would have been flown by hulk hogan weightlifting in the i don't know if that was boosted or not it probably was it's a pretty advanced airplane all right but some of the earlier ones you some can't early, do the yeah, dives and absolutely. turns that people yeah. are pulling um, I might be wrong, but I think the, the all or the, uh, some of the later zeros at least had hydraulically boosted flaps. They didn't have hydraulically boosted ailerons or elevators, so the, they wouldn't be able to pull the the crazy 18 G tons. Yeah. <laughs> this is something we're gonna touch on in the game next week because there's some planes that have some like for some reason this plane has elevator stiffening. The next plane has you know, rudder stiffening or whatever. The plane after that has aileron stiffening, but then the Typhoon Mark 1B, for instance, has none of it. So, or it does have elevator stiffening, I'm wrong about that, but... So it's, they're trying to implement these... They're trying to make the game, I think, a little bit more realistic, but they're not doing it across the board sweeping changes. They're just adjusting the 109s to this, and then, you know, the Mustangs are this, and it's... It's it's Crap. like... It's, it's very balanced. frustrating. It's so unbalanced, yeah. It's so unbalanced, because you're... Sitting there going, how's that plane doing this, and my plane's doing that? And, you, you know, we all don't want to fly uh, Chaikos for the rest of our life. Yeah. Um, Although, Chaika, best fighter. <laughs> uh, so next space question shuttle. is, and this has been a huge thing since 1.37, is engines. And uh, first, you know, let's get a basic for the you know newbie in the game. What is the difference between a radial engine and an Allison engine? And, you know, what airplane uses that... Um, what you know, different. I guess what would be more powerful, reliability and uh, weight. What's the differences between those two, and which airplanes have them typically? 
There's two typical engines in a World War II airplane, either a radial engine or an inline engine. Um, most radials are air-cooled. All inlines are water-cooled. I don't really think there's an air-cooled inline, especially not during World War II, maybe during, during World War One. The radial engines tend to be a lot lighter. Um, they're much more reliable, much more... They're much stronger. They're, they can take a more damage than an inline engine, but the inline the inline engines are much more aerodynamic, and you can do some some tweaking with them that you can't do with a radial engine. They are water cooled, so they need a radiator. So that's that's his biggest weak point right there. Is you get a bullet in in the radiator hose, you're you're pretty much dead. Your engine's gonna fry. And so right now, the big thing about the we're talking about reliability and damage models in the game is that some of the like R2800 Pratt Whitney's and like the P47, the Corsair, um, Hellcat, Hellcat. Sometimes when you get a random 50 cal and it, it it just craps out and dies. Yeah, and, that's absolute bullshit. It don't um, happen at all. I've I've seen videos and all sorts of stuff like that of radial engines popping the cylinder off and continuing to fly. No, no, no problems at all. They are by far the most reliable airplane engine ever built as far as piston engines go. And yeah. so that's one of the things that the game is still, they still need the addresses. The radial engines should be, you know, when you look at an airplane, you go, that has a radial engine. That should be something that goes through your thought process of, I want to pick that plane over that plane, but it, it's just not existent in this game. Uh, yeah, I agree. I don't know why, it is. It's it's one of the more frustrating things about this game, especially the what is it, the one point three one P P forty seven that you would just look at another airplane and it would catch <laughs> on fire and die. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just not the way it was. So in regards of real quick, uh downdraft carburetors. Um real quick we want to explain that to for the early tier players of why when they pitch a certain plane down or they try to, you know, zoom climb, why does their engine uh cut throttle? There's typically two different types of carburetors you can put on an on an airplane engine. One of them is is a downdraft carburetor, which is like a carburetor in your car. The other one is an updraft carburetor, which is basically a upside down carburetor. It shoots fuel up instead of shooting fuel down. So if you invert the airplane, if you're doing a roll or something like that, and you invert an airplane with an updraft carburetor, gravity is still bringing the fuel down into the engine. Downdraft carburetor is just the opposite. If you have a downdraft carburetor and you invert the airplane, or if you do like a negative G roll or something like that, the engine will die because of lack of fuel because there's no fuel getting into it from the carburetor. Spitfire does that, I think, a couple other airplanes. Do Hurricanes that as well. do it, and some of the yeah. early Russians uh, have that. Or all, most of the biplanes do, anyway. I go on 12 has it as well. I 16 as well. Yeah. Um, and then this is something that you like. You've always been dealing with the game is WEP. Certain planes have WEP that aren't supposed to. Some do. Some planes info WEP, and that's screwing everything up right now. Um, what is WEP? What planes had WEP, and how did WEP? Work? WEP stands for War Emergency Power. It's basically a last ditch effort to get the most horsepower out of the engine. Most airplanes, like the P forty seven, the Corsair, and stuff like that, the Hellcat. Most of them were limited to five minutes of WEP period, and then the engine had to be overhauled. Not just five minutes at a time, but five minutes period. It's an absolute last-ditch effort. You're basically killing your engine to get the hell out of the way for something. So people do not use WEP to get off the runway and climb. No, absolutely not. Feet. No, absolutely not. No, not at all. Unlike this game, where you know you can info WEP in, in a lot of airplanes and just be happy the whole time. I think on, yeah, on you some can of go. the. Like the Battle of the Bulger map and stuff like that, where it's really cold outside and you can just do weapon to your little heart's content. It's absolutely <laughs> not real. Yeah, the uh, I think a P forty seven though, if it, if it had a fully laden bomb load and rocket load and everything, I think it did need uh, emergency power to get off a runway. It very but, well could have been, but I mean, you, you could hang as many bombs on that as you could as a, on a B seventeen. Basically, that thing was unstoppable. <laughs> um, so something that Walrus and I were messing around with today is uh. Some planes don't have superchargers correctly modeled into them. Um, in the real world, what does a single stage, like, what does a supercharger do? Single stage and a, you know, two stage supercharger. That was more of a late war thing for most planes. Um, why were they added, and you know, how's it change, and how should the game change? Yeah, superchargers like regular naturally aspirated engines. Uh, the higher you go, the thinner the air is. 
So the fuel air mixture is is not correct. So you need to pump more air into it. That's what a supercharger does. It pumps air into the engine. However, superchargers have the same problem that regular nat that regular naturally aspirated engines do. They as the air gets thinner, they have to work harder. So a two stage or a three stage supercharger is just that. There's one stage that puts out this much air, and then when the airplane gets to a certain altitude, the other stage of the supercharger of the supercharger kicks in and puts that much more air into it so you're basically making not rated horsepower but pretty well close to the normal horsepower up 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 to a certain altitude and uh i have a question what what's the difference between the uh supercharger speed and supercharger stages because there's there's like two stage two speed superchargers and stuff like that typically there's a high and a low you would you would use the low for just every day whatever and then if, if you wanted to really climb you, you kick it into high and it it's that's how that's what controls the speed of the supercharger so like if you were climbing up to say like thirty thousand feet on a in a p51 you'd kick it on low for a while and then as you got higher you kick it up to high and pump more air into the engine. So it kind of has a similar function to the uh, stages. Yeah, it, it kind of is. It's um, it lets you control the engine a lot better. Most airplanes of the day also had pretty much like an automatic one where you it was just on and off, and then the airplane itself would would control what what was needed from it. It, it would ask. That's so that's no, it's kind of hard to describe. You have to really see it. So the speed is what it's talking about whenever you read in documents and stuff, that it's like high blower and low blower? That's exactly it, yep. Exactly. Um, next thing that's kind of big after 1.37 is that engines are starting to overheat left and right. 109s are bad with it, 190s are on that level too. Um, what am I forgetting that's just dying with, with overheating right now? Anything else come to your mind, Walrus? Mm, they they uh, fixed a lot of it. Uh, I know... The BF 109Fs originally, I don't know if they fixed that. You said 109s already. 190s, yeah. yeah. One, yeah that's all mostly mostly anything about. German has just been murdered by this patch. Um, There's no reason like, that you can't cruise in 100% power all day long without overheating anything at all whatsoever. So, but think, when you WEP, that's when the that's when the heat penalty should hit because that's basically what it is. Whenever you WEP with a plane, the engine just cooks. Yeah, and then that's um, what it's that's what it's supposed to do. I mean, you're you're asking the absolute max out of the engine. So Oil's going to get hot. So 100% Everything's should be gonna fine, get hotter. no matter how long you run it. But when you hit WEP, the penalty should be massive overheating or even just losing the engine. Or loss of horsepower after the, yeah, after, because of the heat or, or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So these, uh, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Like the 109 still, like the G, or is it, sorry, um, what is it? I'm trying to think now. Like the E1s, I think, you still can't run at 100% uh, power for like 10, 15 minutes, and then it just cooks. Uh, yeah, even on Battle Bulge. Not, that's not right at all. Um, so, one of the things that Walrus and I have talked about quite a bit is with the paper planes, uh, like the XP-50, were flown test, you know, stateside with none of the safety features that would be put into a normal plane, which is why uh, they f climb like hell and they do all this because they're using numbers that were... Uh, you know, weren't combat basically numbers. Yeah, they weren't typically combat ready. Airplanes, as they get older and as they're used, they gain weight just because of dust collecting in all the crevices and stuff like that. You know, maybe the guy packed a second ham sandwich that day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you never know. Um, the Typically, those prototype airplanes, when they were flown, they were flown as flight test airplanes, which means there's no armor, there's no machine guns in it, there's no, you know, ammunition. None of that stuff. And that stuff greatly affects how an airplane, the numbers yeah, would be absolutely, that yeah. Gaijin's using to base no these No survival airplanes kits, on. none of that stuff like that, yeah. absolutely, yep. So, question is, is um, one of the things that we've, you know, we had a huge problem with that kind of got fixed in this patch, it was like the zeros when they were hit, you know, the fires went out instantly like they had self-sealing fuel tanks, which most of them did not. Um, how does a self-sealing fuel tank work in, in that same system? How does the fire suppression work on, you know, some of the planes that do and don't have them? Um, a self safe fleet tank was a, uh, I believe it was a U.S. invention, actually. Basically, what it is, is either a fuel tank or a fuel bladder. A lot of these airplanes actually had rubber bladders inside the wings until they went to wet wings. That um, was 
coated with this stuff that would self seal. It, it it would heal itself. Like if you, like a, almost like a bulletproof vest. The it, it would it would shred a couple layers, and then it would seal itself. It, it would magically just swell and <laughs> and and seal it was, itself. I mean, really. I thought it was, was kind of like like a sort of rubber type material that melted over itself whenever it got hit. There was rubber. There was all sorts of different things some some airplanes used foam uh, i think gremlin was 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 really big about using foam it and then fire suppr- like the p38 my, could be wrong in this had a fire suppression system on top of that too is that right or wrong i or? probably i don't know off the top of my head i probably had some sort of fire extinguisher system lockheed was really big on that um because the p38 in the game just blows up like a freaking roman candle so does the, the xp50 for that for that matter no airplane <laughs> should do that but the um, one airplane that doesn't have self sealing fuel tanks in the game is the stupid Zero that puts out its fire immediately. <laughs> well, they they fixed that for the most part. But yeah, you used to see a Zero streak across the fly on fire, seal, and then fly off like nothing yep. happened. Yeah, exactly. You know, like he was cooking marshmallows, and um, you know he, he got a s'more done. He's done, and just turn off the fire and go. My re- my record is uh, catching one on fire three times. <laughs> he still didn't go down. In one round. Yes, and one is the same plane didn't land. He just a caught him on fire three times. Um, and then. Most planes have this, but with like armor glass, armor plating, how did that affect an airplane's weight? And then, how do you think feel about War Thunder's uh, head system? They made the pilot smaller finally, but for Which pilot sniping, thing. yeah, but for pilot sniping, you have a huge thing problem with pilot sniping. With like, my planes were armored to protect the pilot back then. That's you know, correct. the pilots yep. were kind of irreplaceable. The planes were replaceable. Yep. So, how many pilots actually were shot compared to kind of War Thunder? You know, land. I would say in 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 reality, the number of people that were actually killed flying these airplanes were a hell of a lot lower than in the game. It's That's still video game. We sure. have mouth snipers, so you know. Like... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, most airplanes had some sort of armor plate behind the cockpit. Um, good example is the P forty seven has that. You can see it in the bubble canopy as a forty five degree angle rolled steel armor headrest. Corsair has the same thing. So it should be nearly impossible for somebody, even if it's a 20 millimeter, to fire it from the back of the plane and kill your pilot? I wouldn't say impossible, or... but it's, it, it, it certainly should be a hell of a lot harder than where it is now. Absolutely. The only really, really way, the only real good, good way to kill someone, kill a pilot, is basically to shoot down. So down into the cockpit, not not from the front, not from the back. Side. And the, the sides, sides were armored, but too. they weren't armored nearly as much as the front was. Okay, so both like five millimeter, whatever panels that they added in around the cockpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was all steel. Airplanes, vast majority of airplanes are made out of aluminum or wood or, and cloth, and the the armor is always steel. And uh, a lot of planes had a lot of planes had the armored, the, well, not armored, but the big thick front glass panel. That was bulletproof. Yep, yep. it was lam- laminated glass. It was a sheet of glass and then clear plastic and then glass and clear and clear plastic. It's like a bulletproof window now. So. Yeah, I think you can you can see like an extra thick uh, front glass panel on on planes like the P thirty eight and the uh, N one K and stuff like that. Yeah, and I um I think the Spitfire Mark nine in the game I think has it as well. I'm not really sure. You gotta take a look at it again. So you say it all the time. Um, Wars, you know, he says it all the time. What does War Thunder need to do, in your opinion, minding it's a video game, need to do from here to, you know, it, they keep calling themselves a simulator, they win simulator awards. What do they need to do to earn those awards, in your eyes, with their, you know, airplane behavior and damage models and whatnot? Honestly, I think what they need to do is they need to stop putting out more shit, more new stuff, and concentrate on what's already out and get that stuff perfected first. With proper flight models and proper damage models and everything else like that, and then go on and add more new content. I think there's such a rush from from these people to put out new stuff and new stuff and new stuff that everything else is kind of set aside on the back burner. Yeah, we seem to get. I don't know the numbers. I haven't done this number crunching, but we seem to get more new planes than we do improved flight models. That's what it feels like patch to patch. Yeah, what was it? The last patch or the patch before that? There was a bunch of flight model additions. 
which is good, but one point three. Right, the day after one point three five, if I remember right, we had a bunch of like, <clears throat> I believe that's when the P forty seven flight model hit, which you know, uh, and the Hellcat flight model came this one point three seven. There have been improvements on flight models, but it's you can tell it that's not the priority. Yeah, it's absolutely not the priority. You can tell it that the priority is new content, new content, new content, because that's what drives a lot of people to the game. You know, some I think most people get tired of flying the same old airplanes over and over and over again, and they want new stuff. Personally, I'd I'd rather fly the correct stuff over and over and over again than have to fly new stuff all the time. But unfortunately, the majority of the player base, you two study the stuff. Um, I don't. I don't know the difference. You know, I know slightly that Spitfire is 109's fight. I don't know. I didn't know before I started playing War Thunder how they're supposed to interact with each other. But I mean, I know for the people who love airplanes that this game is hard to swallow. It is, especially with something like the P-39 and stuff like that. I mean, I get shot down a lot by other players because I know what the airplanes should do, but the airplanes aren't doing what they should be doing in the game. And it's very frustrating. Uh, I need to correct myself on something. I just looked at the uh, British tech tree. and you know, No, I said the, the Spitfire Griffin engine ones, except for the 14, weren't on the release tree. Yeah, apparently they actually all are. I didn't see them. The uh, 14, hey. 18, 21, 22. Those but the, the Gander ones are... Sabre wasn't, was it? No, no, it no, wasn't. I mean, Gander Sabre should be on the German thing. They were sent to Germany after the war. They'll that? be a German plane. Yeah, it'll be a German no, airplane. No idea how that's going to get balanced. <laughs> um, so real quick, we have to bring up, of course, Kobe's one and only forum post that I'm uh, famous. Yeah, has you 200 views for literally saying I'm famous. I'm famous. And more up, you have more positive rep, I think, than Walrus does. You're welcome. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> You're <laughs> so welcome. Kobe's a Kobe's a hero of the people, I guess. That's what I do. Um, and then next week we're gonna have our first international panel with uh, where we're gonna actually discuss the flight models that are in game. A little bit more in depth. This is kind of a preview of how planes should act and control surfaces and whatnot. Um, I know Walrus is currently, like I said last week, is still working on your uh, tactics video. When do you expect that might happen? I'm gonna try to get it done this week. I have it up by this weekend sometime. Um, there? There'll probably be some footage of that playing while we're talking. I recorded a bit of that last night while we're working on in our closed uh, area. Um, I feel like I'm leaving something out. If for everybody who keeps trying to message me and saying hi in game, uh, I, I would like to say hi back, but I've been chat banned for, you know, I'm in the gulag for a while. Um, As you should be. 40 should. days. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Good luck in Country Park, comrade. <laughs> so, like I said, um, I, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I, I've been gagged. Um, anything you two like to say before we sign off? Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>